Good morning. With the latest headline news, I'm Lori Dew, sitting in for Gordon Graham. U.S. astronaut Shannon Lucid is one step closer to getting home. The shuttle Atlantis docked with the Russian space station Mir late last night. The two crews greeted each other early this morning. Shannon Lucid hugged her fellow U.S. astronauts when she saw them. It was the first time she'd seen Americans face to face since Atlantis left her on Mir in March. A series of mechanical and weather delays kept her ride home on the ground for more than six weeks. And consequently, she spent six months in space, breaking the record for the longest space flight by any woman. Lucid will be swapping places with astronaut John Blaha, who's expected to spend four months on Mir. Atlantis is due to return to Earth next week, and it's scheduled to stay docked with Mir until Monday. The Clinton administration is revising its space policy. An official says the administration is abandoning the previous goal of putting a man on Mars by 2019. The new policy commits NASA to putting a robot on Mars by the year 2000. President Clinton's science advisor is expected to announce the revised plans today. Well, jury selection resumes today in the wrongful death civil trial of O.J. Simpson. And CNN has learned the presiding judge has decided not to contest an appeals court ruling softening his strict gag order. The ruling will allow the media to hear the trial on a closed circuit audio feed to a newsroom. And sketch artists will be allowed in the courtroom. CNN's Jim Murray has more. Jury selection has begun in the O.J. Simpson civil case with reporters monitoring the judge's questioning of prospective jurors who are claiming hardship. The judge is being very tough about excusing anybody. Uh, if the people said that they had airline tickets to go somewhere, he said, bring me the airline tickets, I want to see them. Plaintiffs in Simpson's civil trial want the jurors to hear more blood evidence than the jurors heard in the criminal case. LAPD tests found what appeared to be blood in the sink and shower drain in O.J. Simpson's Brentwood estate and on the air conditioner outside the guest house where Cato Kalin was staying. But since no further testing was done to prove those stains were human blood, Simpson's lawyers think the jury should not hear any of it. Judge Hiroshi Fujisaki will hold a special hearing to determine the admissibility of that unconfirmed blood evidence. The judge is sealing all autopsy photographs of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman, but for the time being, he will not seal any photos of the crime scene which were broadcast during the criminal case. The judge told potential jurors this case should last about four months. He said he will not sequester the jury. According to experts like Joe Allen Demetrius, who was O.J. Simpson's jury consultant in the criminal case, it's expected to take at least three weeks to impanel a jury. Jim Moray, CNN, Santa Monica, California. Developers and environmentalists have fought over land in southern Utah for years. And yesterday, the environmentalists won with some help from President Clinton. He's declared 1.7 million acres of red rock cliffs and canyons in southern Utah a national monument. That blocks development of one of the country's largest coal reserves, potentially worth trillions of dollars. And Utah's political leaders are unhappy about that. Clinton made the announcement while visiting the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Theodore Roosevelt designated that national monument 88 years ago, and Clinton says he's acting for the same reasons today. Its uniquely American landscape is now one of the most isolated places in the lower 48 states. In protecting it, we live up to our obligation to preserve our natural heritage. We are saying very simply, our parents and grandparents saved the Grand Canyon for us. Today, we will save the Grand Escalante Canyons and the Kaparowitz Plateaus of Utah for our children. Clinton is now in Seattle, where he, his wife, and the Gores will begin another bus trip. They'll take a day-long campaign tour of the Pacific Northwest, ending in Portland, Oregon. The president is expected to stress more pro-environment policies during this trip. The well, lawyers for Reform Party presidential candidate Ross Perot are expected to file suit today over his exclusion from the presidential debates. The lawsuit argues, among other things, that the exclusion is unconstitutional. Perot says the two major parties are afraid to include him. Republican presidential nominee Bob Dole took his anti-drug message to California, and his slogan, Just Don't Do It, sounded good to the youthful audience. But will it win Dole votes, and can it change some of the prevailing attitudes on drugs in America? Candy Crowley explores this issue. At a Catholic high school which uses drug-sniffing dogs, Bob Dole unleashed a blistering indictment of anti-drug policy in the Clinton White House. The president sent up a white flag of surrender. 
It is a naked failure of leadership. To an audience too young to vote but old enough to do dope, Dole recalled an MTV moment. If you had to do over again, would you inhale? <laughs> sure, if I could. I tried before. A president is supposed to show the way, and the president has shown his moral confusion. Once again, with an earshot of Hollywood, Dole complained that the heroin needle has become a symbol of fashionable rebellion. He said movies like Pulp Fiction and the Scottish flick Train Spotting feature the romance of heroin. He hit rock musicians who celebrate a culture of heroin and the fashion industry for pushing something called the junkie look. Heroin has become a symbol embodying an attitude, a fascination with risk and death. The attraction of self-destruction, if you can believe it. And to his anti-drug package, Dole offered a new logo and slogan. The Dole administration will set a very different but simple standard. Just don't do it. And then there's the kids. I'm just glad that they have this slogan. And it did give a good message to these kids. They're not going to think just don't do it when they're faced with like a, a joint or something. So I don't know if they'll be that effective. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Late in the California day, Dole took his anti-drug package and slogan to a rally in Chico and gave everyone a brief scare. Reaching out from the platform to shake hands, Dole leaned on the white railing. Unsecured, it gave way. He went head first. Long before anyone else had a chance to recover, Dole was back on stage cracking jokes. And I think I just earned my third Purple Heart going over the Dole delivered one of his better speeches, led the crowd in his anti-drug chant, and lingered to shake hands. Unable to break his fall, Dole landed on his bad shoulder, but later assured reporters he was fine. His spokesman, Nelson Warfield, noted that members of the press court taking pictures of the candidate were able to break his fall, proving, quipped Warfield, we do have a use for the press after all. Candy Crowley, CNN, with the Dole campaign, Chico, California. Federal investigators are apparently shifting their focus in the crash of TWA Flight 800. A senior official with the National Transportation Safety Board says the agency is becoming more convinced that none of the physical evidence proves a bomb brought down the plane. The NTSB is now planning tests to show the explosion could have been caused by mechanical failure alone. Investigators say they admit they have no firm evidence of mechanical malfunction. But sources say the lack of proof of a bombing may give more credibility to the theory that the crash was caused by an explosion in the Boeing 747 center fuel tank. In Bosnia, Muslim President Alija Izbegovic has won the most votes in the presidential election. A 72-hour appeal period follows, but Izbegovic is expected to chair a three-man presidency. He'll be joined by an ultra-nationalist Serb who came in a close second and a Croatian leader. The United States is calling the election a victory for democracy. And CNN has confirmed that South Korean soldiers today killed three more North Korean infiltrators who entered the country in a submarine. In total, South Korean security forces have shot and killed six infiltrators. One man was taken into custody. Yesterday, South Korean officials found a submarine along their east coast. Eleven North Korean bodies were discovered near the vessel. South Korean officials say it was apparently a mass suicide in order to avoid capture. On Capitol Hill, House lawmakers unveiled a high-tech handgun that's being hailed as a breakthrough. The smart gun will fire only in the hand of its owner. It's being developed for police departments. An estimated one-sixth of police officers killed with a firearm are shot with their own weapon. The smart gun uses radio frequency technology to block unauthorized use. It's not yet available in stores. Health Secretary Jana Shalala calls the latest figures on child abuse shameful and startling. The government reports the number of American children being abused, neglected, and seriously injured is soaring, while efforts to protect them are slipping. Kathleen Koch has details. From New York to the nation's capital, a new government study says cases of child abuse are becoming commonplace. The third national incident study of child abuse and neglect found that the number of confirmed cases rose from 737,000 in 1986 to just over a million in 1993. But factoring in cases not reported, it estimates the problem actually doubled. It's our responsibility as caring adults in this country to protect our children. 
most at risk are children from low-income families. The study found they were 22 times more likely to be maltreated or seriously injured than children in families with an annual income of $30,000 or more, and 18 times more likely to be sexually abused. Uh, Experts blame poverty, poverty and more. I think neighborhoods that are in terrible shape, uh, uh, families that are not working, working well, uh, where kids are neglected and kids are abused. Um, and I think a lot of it is, is exacerbated by drugs. Former drug addict and alcoholic Paula Lewis and her three-year-old son might have been part of those statistics if it weren't for a community-based prevention program that's helped turn her life around. It's like I was in the dark, but now I'm in the light. And I've been making steps just piece by piece, but it's coming together and it's getting better. If you're happy and you know it's two or three. Secretary Shalala announced $23 million in grants for such programs. We're helping parents understand how a child grows and develops so that they have appropriate expectations, so they aren't assuming their child's going to know to do something or not do something. And that is child abuse prevention. That is neglect prevention. I think if I didn't have this place, if I was at home, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd completely fly off the handle, probably, I don't know. Meanwhile, the study criticizes state agencies for not doing enough. It found that while 44% of children harmed by abuse and neglect in 1986 were investigated by state child protective services, by 1993, only 28% were. States say while child abuse is up, their budgets are down, so they're doing more with less. Less money, less people, and we didn't develop an infrastructure to take on some of that work. That infrastructure is now growing and putting smiles instead of tears on the faces of those at risk. Yeah. Kathleen Koch for CNN, Washington. A man who escaped a Florida chain gang 44 years ago is now truly free. A New York judge has dismissed the case against Eddie Brown. He fled after partially serving a five-year sentence for robbing a Miami convenience store in 1952. Brown says he ran because he feared he would be the victim of a racist attack. Police found the Florida arrest warrant after Brown was involved in a minor traffic accident. Dollars and Cents News is up next. A cold front in the plains will produce rain and possibly more severe weather in Oklahoma and Texas. The rain will end in the northeast. This is Headline News, a CNN network.